So one of the things that confused me the most when I first started to learn about signals and systems was this idea of a unit impulse and more specifically an impulse response. To me, it didn't quite make sense what this was. I mean, sure the maths was easy enough to understand, but intuitively it wasn't quite clear what this meant. So I'm going to try and explain that to you in this video. So this is one of the weird scenarios where I think it's actually easier to visualize the discrete case before visualizing the continuous case. And the discrete case, we call it the unit pulse and the pulse response, whereas for the continuous case, we call it the unit impulse and the impulse response respectively. And I don't quite know why the terminology is like this, but that's just the way that I learned it. So anyways, a unit pulse, the discrete case, is just defined as a one at a specific time. A pulse at a specific time t is just a one at that time t and it's a zero everywhere else. So it just looks like a little spike of height one. And I actually think this makes quite a bit of sense given that it's called a unit pulse. I mean, it's a pulse, so it's a sharp spike, and it's a unit pulse, so it's of height one. So looking back at the example of fireworks from my previous video on convolution, which by the way is linked up here if you haven't watched it before, well, you could see that the fireworks function is just made up of a series of pulses at every minute. You know, at minute zero, there was a pulse of height one corresponding to one firework being set off. At minute one, there was a pulse of height two corresponding to two fireworks being set off and so forth. And the question is, why is this so important? I mean, what's so special about this? Yeah, sure, it can be represented by a series of pulses, but why do we care? And the answer to this is, if we looked at the actual end goal, which was to find out how much smoke was in the air after a certain time period, well, we had to look at two functions. Now, one of those functions was the fireworks function, which is a series of pulses. But the second function, the smoke function, was actually what the response was to one single pulse. It was a way to describe how much smoke was produced by a unit pulse. And this is called the pulse response. And the reason why this pulse response is so important to us is that it represents the output in response to essentially the simplest possible input, which is a unit pulse. So the way I personally like to visualize what a pulse response or an impulse response is, is what is the system gonna look like when I give it a little flick? And of course, this helps to think about things in terms of maybe a mass on a spring or a pendulum, because this doesn't quite make as much sense when you start thinking about voltages and temperatures and those variables, but the, the thought remains the same. It's what is the response to the system when you give it a little flick of input? Now, where this idea of a pulse response becomes so powerful is that it actually helps you find the response of a system to any arbitrary input. And the reason for that is any input can essentially be represented as a train of pulses. And of course, these pulses will be of varying heights depending on what the value of the input is at a certain time. But the input can be represented as this train of pulses. So if you want to find out what the output of a system is in response to some input, well, all you have to do is take the convolution of the pulse response of the system, as well as the input of the system, which is the train of pulses. And this should make a lot more sense if you check out my video on convolution, so please do that first. Okay, so what about the continuous case? What is the unit impulse? And the way you define it for the continuous case is, well, it's just a spike of infinity that well, is infinitely long high, infinitely thin, but somehow when you integrate under it, it has an area of one. And this is actually called the Dirac Delta function. But my advice to you right now is don't stress out about this maths too much. Just take it as this is how you define a unit impulse. Because what's more important is what does this unit impulse represent? And that is the exact same as the discrete case. It's just a little flick of input that you give to your system. And the impulse response? Well, it's just the response of the system to that little flick of input. And the response of a system to any arbitrary input is exactly the same as the discrete case. It's just the convolution of the impulse response and the input signal. And this is the exact same idea as the discrete case, except now that instead of having, you know, finite pulses at set intervals, you now have infinitely many impulses at infinitely small intervals. And this is just the continuous analogy of the discrete case. That's all it is. So in short, the unit pulse for discrete cases and the unit impulse for continuous cases represent the most perfect little unit sized spike of input that you could possibly have. It is that metaphorical little flick that you give into your system. And intuitively, this should not be too difficult to wrap your head around, which is why the video is not very long. I mean, you don't need thousands of examples to understand this. But if you start getting bogged down in the maths or you're only exposed to the maths and you start doing all these integrals and not really understanding what you're doing, this can be extremely challenging to wrap your head around. And that's what I personally struggled with, which is why I'm making this video for you guys. 
The other thing to remember is that the pulse response and the impulse response is a very important building block for signals and systems because it lets you find out what the output of a system is to any arbitrary input because you can represent any input for the discrete case as a train of pulses and for the continuous case as infinitely many little impulses. So that's really it for this video. Please let me know down below if you have any questions or comments or you feel like you still don't quite understand things and I'll catch you guys next time.